G'day guys, do you want to know how I pack for a month long vacation with all my photography gear and clothes that fit under eight kilos that's carry on legal? All that and more, stick around. Okay guys, thank you for joining me. Today, I'm gonna to explain everything that I carry for a month long vacation here in Egypt. Egypt is a crazy and hustling, bustling place. I've been here for two days already and it is just absolutely mental. So I'm sorry about all the noise, but that is the ambient noise of Egypt itself. It's crazy, it's busy, but it should, it should be pretty absolutely epic. So I'm gonna start with my clothes because it's the least important, what we least care about when we're photographers traveling. So I'm basically going to write a list here of what I'm traveling with. Five pairs of socks, seven pairs of underwear, uh, six pairs of underwear, sorry. Three pairs of shorts, one acts as a pair of underwear that I can wear when I wash. The second pair is uh, swimming shorts, swimming trunks, whatever you like to call them. And the third one is a nicer pair. Then I've got five tops. Okay, so three are cotton and two of them are Nike dry fits. So the hotter activities that we do, the Nike dry fits put on sweat, they're easier to wash in a sink or wherever it is and much easier to hang outside dry within the day. Uh, what I'm wearing, so long pants, one of the tops and also a jumper. The only thing I haven't got here is a jacket. It's a light down jacket. I'm only probably going to wear it once because we go to a white desert in a couple of days where I assume it's going to be quite cold. Because Egypt's so crazy, busy, hustle, you can hear earplugs, a must need, uh, headache tablets, I get a lot of headaches unfortunately, I think I'm going to get a lot of them in Egypt, uh, sunglasses because obviously I am blind. Then I'm going to move on to the really annoying part that I hate travelling with and every time I go away I contemplate bringing it. But every time I go away, I end up using it and doing a lot of editing. So I've got my laptop, it's the Dell XPS 15. It's an absolute beast of a machine. 4K screen, 32 gigabyte, one, ter one terabyte SSD. It's a workhorse, but the biggest problem is it's like two to three kilos. It's super heavy, but that's what you get. Charger for it, obviously, so you can just see by the size of the charger, it's like almost the size of my camera. It's really, really big. This is a Dell Travel mouse, really cool. You flick it over, that's on, that's off, really, really cool. But these here are something I wanted to talk about. This is the latest edition. After I come back from Kyrgyzstan, I was basically traveling with three, no, two, sorry, two, same as this now, two uh, hard drives. They weren't solid state like these are. So these are solid state. These are from SanDisk. I actually got the idea from Brendan Vanson. He done a promotion for them. I looked into them and they do suit my or our travel needs. So this one's 500 gig, this one's 250. This is what I keep, so the 500 I keep all my footage on. So basically every night I come and dump it on my laptop, dump it on here. But this is my work drive, okay? So I'm working, I'll be working from uh, Premiere Pro from here. Uh, all the footage that I want to work, so editing vlogs and that, and then I'll use Premiere Pro just to run on my laptop. So it's better to run the dual, uh, especially SSD, if you've got SSD on my laptop, and also here it's much, much faster, and also it's USB-C, so it does up to 495 megabytes write speed, which is really, really cool fact. But on these two things, I want to touch on some quick tips and tricks. With your laptop, it can be brought as a second bag on most airlines around Europe, I know that for a fact, but most from around the world. So if you ever get my bag weigh, which I'm gonna to touch on in a second, I take this out. It's about two kilos, so if I'm carrying with 10 kilos, it's eight kilos carry on. I'll take this out, weigh it, it comes up right. They should weigh this bag, but they hardly ever, ever weigh it because they know it's a laptop and it's gonna sit under the seat or somewhere along the line. Next is clothes, I wanna talk about just bring what you need, not what you want. So I pack for one week. That's it, one week I can get by. So on this trip, I'm here for four weeks or just under four weeks, I'll wash three times and I know I'm fine all the way through. But if you're hesitant about bringing something, especially a t-shirt or something, 
leave it behind. You can buy it here. We already walked through the, around the bazaar here in uh, Egypt and it is so cheap for t-shirts. A crappy t-shirt will cost you like one or two euros in pretty much any country. So just save the weight there, save the time and hassle, buy cheap clothes when you're there, if that's something you want to do. If you want to look good, look fancy, bring it all with you, but you're not going to be able to carry just on carry-on luggage. So the next is the bag. I always bring a day pack because I want to bring a water bottle, camera, one lens, you know, just the little stuff, passports, wallet. And if I did carry around my big backpack, it gets super frustrating, super annoying. So just a small backpack. This folds down pretty much to nothing and just slides in. Uh, usually I put my laptop in it and just slide it in down there also. But this here, I don't want to touch on too much because I want to do a complete separate vlog on this. It's an incredible backpack, but it's my first actual full trip. Using it, exploring it, everything. I've used it in Slovenia for the last month, six weeks. Fantastic backpack. But this is the reason why I bought it for trips like this. All, like, all my camera gear, all my clothes, just chuck in one bag and it's carry on legal. Really, really cool fact I'm going to show you. It folds out the back, so all your storage compartment here. You can access things there, and plus this can be pushed out for more camera equipment, but I don't need that on this trip. It's got plenty of things here, here, around. That's just for the photography side. It has got straps on the top, so it is top loading as well, but all these separate compartments, so easy for traveling and for photography gear. So just getting on the plane, off the plane, I'm gonna use that obviously because it's the biggest bag. But once I'm in Egypt, I'm not gonna use it probably as much as I would if I was a trip in Albania, Kyrgyzstan, those types of trips where I'd carry this around all day, every day. And let me tell you, I have carried it around for about six or seven hours in the mountains, absolutely perfect, very, very comfortable. Storage protector, I recommend everyone, everyone traveling to any country, I use it in Slovenia all the time because my gear is so expensive, but I would rather replace this 11, 12 euro thing than anything else. Headphones for editing, obviously charger for my phone, very, very important. Uh, charger for the batteries, for the camera, for the Fuji. That's another great thing. I just have to bring one charger, one battery now because I'm filming off Fuji. I'm using a Fuji here also. These are two Peak Design straps, one for the X-H1, one for the X-T3. This is the small rig. This is something I bought just before I went away. It's like a multi-tool thing, but just for photographers. It's really, really good. And I was always carrying around Allen key screws, all this crap, all through my bag. Now this comes in a really small, nice compartment. That is really cool. And everything I'm talking about now will be links in the description below. But for me, it's got all the size of the hex keys and obviously some torque keys and just a few other things. Really, really cool. Super lightweight, super easy just to chuck in the backpack and you know exactly where it is. Uh, filter holders. So this is for the ND filter that's actually filming with right now. I'm gonna to touch on what I'm filming with right now. But these here, uh, so I've got a filter for the 16 mil that was through on the front. But this is something else I want to touch on in a completely separate vlog. Filter, done, can't fall off, off as quickly as you want. So polarizer and also filter, magnetic, oh how freaking cool is that? Complete separate vlog because this would change filmmakers, travelers, worlds. So I've got a filter adapter for this, the 1855 which I'm filming on, polarizer and variable ND, three stop to eight stop or nine stop, but I don't use the nine stop. This is something I've rented because we want to go to a place called Dahab, which is really, really good for snorkeling and diving. We're just going to use it for snorkeling, hopefully one or two times. We're going to go snorkeling, get some footage. I'm going to do a vlog, hopefully, on this. Do we need underwater cameras or do we just need GoPros? All that sort of stuff, which is really cool. As I said before, spare batteries, one in here, one in there. Force extra because we know Fuji sucks with battery life. Uh, this is just an Arca Swiss base plate just in case I haven't got an L bracket on the X-H1, just in case I want to do there and put it on to the tripod. Uh, cleaning stuff, so brush, uh, just a microfiber tower, rocket blower because we are going to two, two deserts that I know of, maybe three, don't know. Spare SD cards because you always 
need them, but you never know when. Right, getting onto camera equipment, obviously smartphone, all the apps, music, whatever you need. I'm gonna talk about what I'm using now. So I did bring the Manfrotto 190 Go, which is a smaller tripod. It folds down to about 40 centimeters, but folds up to about 140 centimeters. It is my smallest tripod. Obviously ball head. The really big issue with that is, I brought that literally for one photo in the white desert. I wanna do some star photography in the white desert that we're going to, because it should be clear should be clear so i've got a big tripod a medium tripod now i used to have a really small tripod and this is the problem with youtube is you you sort of need two tripods when you're traveling or when you're doing something to film yourself and obviously one to hold the main camera i would or i am thinking i want to know your guys thoughts in the comments below should i get a small tripod that folds down to about 30 centimeters carbon fiber super lightweight for trips like this and then on another trip, bring it just for the vlogging camera and then have this 190 go as the main tripod. I don't know, all these things, all this equipment, but I wanna try and become minimalist as possible. So it's sort of contradicting myself a little bit. Getting onto that, uh, I am traveling with the X-T3 also, which is filming you right, or filming me right now, what you're watching through. The 18 to 55 mid-range uh, zoom and also the Rode mini mic with the fur like the cats will love it here. My great debate. Right, so what I am trying to do is go minimalist as possible with my photography gear and especially on this trip because I wanna learn the craft of photography and videography again. And the only way you can learn the craft is by having minimal, minimalist gear, not all this gear and changing over lenses all the time. Learn the gear inside out and that will, that's what I think to me will bring the best results. If you learn the best of what you want to use, you're going to get the best of what you're using. Then you can upgrade a little bit to do that, which is already what I found. I know on this trip that 8 55 is going to limit me in so many aspects. I used this setup for one week in Slovenia before I left to get to know the craft of these lenses. 16mm 1.4, which is I want to use in the star photography, but I know it's bad for star photography. I want to find out how bad and how can I improve it to make it not as bad as everyone says it is. One lens, low light filming, low light photography, star photography, all that sort of stuff. Macro filming can be done with this lens. The Samyang 12mm that I own can only do one thing for me, really. Now, I did do a great debate about the Sony to Fujifilm, which obviously always gets mixed reviews. But I did say in that lens, that in that review, sorry, it was all about what I use the camera for, and that is what I use this for also. So I went out and, re and uh, rented the Fujifilm X-H1. I have had it for about a week now playing around with it, but this is gonna be the extensive trip, this one month trip of me using it. So camera lineup, X-H1, X-T3, 16mm 1.4 and 18 to 55mm. Guys, this is my minimalist trip that I could possibly take. I couldn't do anything less basically than what I'm taking right now. This is as low as I can go on the scrim, carry it all day on my back. The great thing is I can walk from buses to the hotel, to the hostel, wherever. If it's 15 kilometers, pff, let's do it it's on my back. Minimalist gear, really, really cool. I'll be writing a blog about this also, which will be linked in the description below. And all the links to all this stuff that I'm carrying right now will be in the description below. They are affiliate links, I just wanna put a heads up. So anything you do purchase will help me out a little bit, which guys, I do appreciate so much by making this content. Secondly, I want you to comment below, what would you take on a minimalist trip like this? You've got one month in a warm vacation, a uh, warm, sorry, climate, so I can afford to pack shorts and t-shirts, which are much lighter. But camera gear wise, let me know what you would take on a trip like this. It goes everything from star photography, filming throughout the day, filming at night, filming in the morning at sunrise, photographing all day long, but you have to carry it all day. What would you take, two cameras like me or just one? And then what lens would you take from what manufacturer? I'm super interested to know because it was quite difficult to do that. Also a third camera, just for underwater photography. It's super lightweight, only one battery, it's fine. It's gonna be all good. 
Minimalist is the way to go in photography. I'm super pumped. Stick around because I've got, not a container, magnetic filter adapters to talk about because they have changed my life and I'm sure they're gonna change my life even more in Egypt. And then there's banging of a backpack that I can't wait to talk about and use here in Egypt. But guys, that is me done for day three here in Egypt. I can't wait to see what this crazy adventurous country brings me. Not a lot of landscape photography, I must be honest, but who bloody knows. Guys, that is me done. If you like this content, please like, subscribe and share. I'll see you in Egypt soon. Ciao.